in the air. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Thank you for joining in, team. This is Team Pastor Mike Grizzy Griswold. And today we have for you Tim Robinson, the great Tim Robinson. And you know this song, if you can stand up and sing it with me. We sing it all the time in Team Church. Let me know when you're ready. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Because Elijah is very ill. He's sick. And he's a prophet. He's a man of God. And the king is very evil. In those days, you could hashtag evil king because all the kings were pretty evil. So the king came down and wept over Elijah's face. He's weeping over Elijah's face. And he says, oh, father, oh, father your chariots of Israel and their horsemen. Now, he would only say this because it's what Elijah had provided to his nation when they were lacking. The same way with you and I. When we are lacking and God provides something to us, we now call God merciful father, forgiver, protector. We know him in a real way. Healer, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We know him by what he has contributed to us, right? Then he goes on to say in verse 15, Elijah said to him, take a bow and some arrow. So he took himself a bow and some arrow. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on the bow and Elijah put his hand on the king's hand. This is what's good. When we put our hands into the king hand, we are putting our hands into a power that's greater than our own. We're not operating in our strength. We're now operating in God's strength. So during these times of uncertainty, on this lockdown, we're able to operate in the strength that God has provided us with. His word is true and the devil is alive. Watch this. In verse 17, this is what he says. He says, open the east window and he opened. Then Elijah said, shoot, and he shot, and he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of the deliverance of Syria, Syria, you must strike the Syrians at Apac and destroy them. 
Then he said, take your arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck the ground three times and he stopped. The man of God became angry and he said, you should have struck five or six times. But because you have only struck three times, they will not be totally destroyed. But now you have struck Syria only three times. What would allow him to stop striking? What would allow him to, nowhere in the Bible it tells us what caused him to stop. But something caused him to stop. What causes us to stop when we start something? Is it we got tired? Did someone offend us? Did we not like what was going on? What happened that caused you to stop going hard for something that was beneficial to yourself? Something that benefits you in a positive way. Maybe an exercise program you started. Maybe a GED program. Maybe some homework. Some spring break homework you said you was going to start. And it lays there in a pile and it just sits. Who told you to stop striking right there? Is the question for today. Because in the text it's telling us to teach us that. Don't stop striking. Because when you leave things unfinished and incomplete... That's just what happens, man. Amen, amen. I'm glad that you stayed with me. Continue to stay focused. We got one more for you. And just get in the mind of who do you say I am? Who do you say that God is to you? Who are you proclaiming that God is to you during these times of uncertainties? We know him to begin to be the beginning and the end. such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders us, the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Nothing you can't handle, nothing you can't handle, nothing you can't handle, 
So the thing is, check this out, y'all. Do not limit yourselves. Don't put limits on yourselves. Don't put God in a box. God is far more greater than what we can think, imagine. So do not put God in a box. When we put limits on God, we say he can only do it one way. The same way we do standardized tests when we uh, check a box to complete the test. Well, God's going to show us different ways to continue to complete the test that we have before us in today's times with the uncertainties. So don't put God in a box. Continue to go on where you started at. Continue to keep doing what you started. Griswold, my man. God bless you. Good night.